here on the Ashokan Reservoir again. And today I'm just going to troll around with Paula's, try to get another trout like I did the other day. I might take some time and do a few casts and try to do a little catch and release, smallmouth fishing. Just, just going to get out and have some fun, get some exercise rowing the boat. I hope everybody enjoys this video. Thanks for watching. Alright, so I start off my day with a rattling shad wrap. It goes about 15 feet deep normally, but I have fluorocarbon line on, so I'm getting about 16, 17 feet deep. It's my favorite lure at the Shokan Reservoir for this time of year. I caught a lot of big trout with it over the years. And when I feel like the fish are aggressive, I really like to use the rattling shad wrap. Fluorocarbon not only makes it go deeper, but it's also near invisible underwater, which is really important at the show can because it's very clear water and the trout tend to spook really easy. Now, because they are so skittish, I found it's really important to let out a lot of line behind the boat, at least 200 feet. It's pain in the butt to reel in that much line with a big fish, but you're going to get more big fish the further back you get that lure behind the boat. They are very skittish, and no matter how you row, it is going to be loud. So eventually I make the decision to put out a second line. I decide to put out a Rapala Trolls 220. I've done really good in this reservoir with the whole Rapala Trolls 2 series from like 10, 15, 20 feet. They're all really good and I highly recommend them. Um, I don't always put out a second line trolling when I'm by myself because when you hook a fish, you got the second line that starts to get slack and the boat spins and it becomes something to deal with, which you're going to see later in this video. However, it does double your chances and it, you know, it's, it's definitely worth the risk. A lot of times when I'm trolling these suspending crankbaits, if I take a little pause, the lure slows down but it just kind of suspends there and they get totally mollywopped. That happened today too. <laughs> It's a nice trout. Very nice trout. He's doing a lot of head shaking. I hope we can get this guy in. This is a big trout. He's getting near the other line. Always make sure you have your drag set properly. The fish gets close to your feet at, or the boat and it tries to run like that. Your drag's not set right. You're going to lose it. It's going to snap your line or break your pole. I've seen it happen to other people. Please make sure you have your drag set right. You don't want to lose the fish of your dreams because you didn't have your drag set. And here you see why I have to move the line. It's one of the reasons why I sometimes don't have two lures out when I'm by myself because you just get that slack. But it's worth it to have that chance for another fish as we're going to see later on. I'm just realizing right now during editing, but this is my first fish ever on this new pole. It's a Abu Garcia Vendetta, eight foot, and I really like it so far. Well, stay on, please stay on. Please, Jesus, let me get this fish. Oh my God, he is swirling around insane. It is giving me heart attacks. Please stay on there. Yes! 
All right, here's a nice fish. We got to get this line in. Oh, this line is in the way and tangled up and everything. All right, all right. That's a nice trout right there. Woo! Let's get this other line in and out of our way. That was a scary fight. It was swirling and twirling and doing all this weird flippy dipping and I was, whoo. I, I, I was getting a little nervous. <laughs> nice trout, really girthy. Woo. All right, we're gonna have to cut you off. that very easy. Ooh, that shad wrap is deadly. It's gonna be hard to get you off of this hook. There we go. Oh, wait. All right. We just got a really big trout today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So this guy's going in the bucket, and we're going to see if we can get a couple more nice big trout like this. This is a Shokan Reservoir fishing. <laughs> All right, so we have our shad wrap cast back out again, and now we're going to take this other smaller Rapala. It says it's supposed to go four feet, but with the current setup with the braided line and the fluorocarbon leader, I've actually had it kind of snag up on bottom at about nine feet thankfully i got it back out <laughs> so we got one lure that's going about 16 17 feet that just caught a fish and we have another lure that's out there at about eight or nine we are marking lots of fish and we're just gonna keep out there keep trolling and keep rowing So after catching that one trout, I decided against going for any smallmouth for catch and release and I really just wanted to get another trout so I'd have a pair to bring home to my Scotia. My wife, I love her. So we troll around all day. I cast out different combinations of lures, always keeping that rattling shad wrap out and then just trying another lure with it. I um, actually ended up rowing a little bit over seven miles throughout the course of the day. So towards the end of the day I decided that the second lure I'm going to have out is going to be an original shad wrap. I really like them. They don't have the rattles and when there's a lot of fishing pressure like other fishermen out there, it really seems to do well. I really like original shad wraps made out of balsa wood. They're great lure, one of my favorites. At the end of the trip, I catch a fish on the second pole. If I didn't have it out, I would not have caught a second fish. I guarantee you if I only had one pole, I would have been using the other lure with the rattles that already caught a fish and I wouldn't have this one out, or at least it's unlikely. Oh, it's 
jump in. Probably gonna be a small mouth though. It's definitely in the other line now. All oh, that splash is swirling on top of the other line. There's no way he's not in the other line. I think maybe getting caught up in the other line is what made him do all that swirling. Looks like a trout again. Can't tell yet for sure. Oh yeah. Wow, crazy swirling. That's insane. all wrapped up even worse. Let's get everything cut. Alright. I know, I know, I know, I know. Alright, let me get this other one. So if that bites it now, I'm gonna have to pull it in my hand. I had to horse him in more than I intended on just because um he got tangled in that line and started swirling and it got me really nervous. Um, I had just said, I had just said that if I catch him, if I catch another one, I'm going to do catch clean cook. And as soon as I said that, the pole goes off. So I guess I got to turn this to catch clean cook. why I don't usually troll with two when I'm by myself anyway So I caught him on the original shad wrap, the quiet one. Nice. All right, let's get him unhooked and in the bug. Right. around himself I had to cut that braided line in the boat and we're done fishing for today so we're just gonna get back on shore I'll do a quick little summary and show these fish off for you a little bit better second one we just caught very happy with these two let's see if I get a good thing for a thumbnail I had a lot of fun fishing today we caught a couple of 
pretty good trout out of the reservoir. We're going to get them home, measure them up, see how big they are, cut them up, cook them up, and we'll have a nice catch clean cook video with some really big Ashokan reservoir trout. I hope you enjoy watching this video as much as I make I hope you enjoy watching these videos as much as I enjoy making these videos because this is this is a lot of fun. Thank you for watching and we'll see you back at the kitchen. Alright, now first let's do our measure. Just at 22 inches. up here to get cut up first. Before we cut him, we're going to measure our other guy. Eighteen and just shy of an eighteen and a half. Nice. Very nice. Okay. All right, we're gonna clean these guys like we have in other videos. Except he's a little bigger. All right, so we're just gonna start scaling at the tail. And we're just kind of shaving it with the knife. really good down by the belly let's give him a rinse and flip it over and do the other side thing but the other side start with the edge of the tail and work our way up to the head a quick clean we'll get right back all right now we're going to start our head cut very important we start behind this fin and the little bone with the fin and work our way down at an angle towards the skull really helps to have a good sharp knife Sorry from all the rowing. There we go. Right, we got the head removed. Put in the garbage can. Okay. Now, we take our knife and we get that clean off. We start with the butt. Just kind of put it in there. Go right between these two fins. 
way out to the front. And just reach in there and pull everything out. Okay. Take it over to the sink and we're going to give it a good cleaning out inside. Okay, so now we have our salt, we pour a lot of salt in there, it helps just draw all the blood out the fish, all the gamey taste out, any little bit of sliminess or anything like that, and it makes that meat really just good and yummy and ready to be cooked. Okay, then we just flop the guy in there with the salt water. We have a lid for our thing um, over here. Sorry about that. We have a lid for our thing. We can just put it in there and put it in the fridge. But we do have one more we're gonna cut up. We're not gonna do that on video. Though. We're just gonna cut up the other one and then um, put them in here. Tomorrow we're gonna take them out. We're gonna cook them up together and eat them for everyone to see. So I hope you all enjoy this video. Okay. So we have our big trout here. We had them soaking in salt water overnight. We just have a big bowl that we put a little bit of salt into the water. We put actually a lot of salt. It's basically right to the point where it won't dissolve anymore. And then we just let it sit in the, um, in the fridge overnight. So we take it out and we just did a double check with our cleaning, made sure that there wasn't any scales or anything that we missed or anything inside of the stomach or anything like that. So now that it's done and it's ready, we're gonna prep our pan actually have some butter here that I'm going to take today. I'm just going to give it a quick rub all over the pan. Okay. 
gonna take our fish and we're gonna put it on the pan. Okay. Okay, now we got it in the pan. We're gonna take a little bit of our seasoning. I like this Italian seasoning blend, it's really good. We have some garlic already cut up and we have some pepper. Um, if you do not you do this soak it in salt water like I do, then you might want to add a little salt. And then over here I have this little bit of garlic powder. I'm not going to put that directly on the fish, but I'm going to make a butter garlic sauce that um, I put a little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of cut up garlic, and just a little bit of my Italian seasoning and just melt some butter so I could drizzle on the fish while we're eating it. And that's really good. Okay, so we're going to start off. We're just going to spritz a little bit of this on the fish. We're going to flop it open and get inside. This is our Italian seasoning. Get the other side good. And we use it fairly liberally. We put it over fairly thick. This has thyme in it. Uh, thyme is really important to me on most of my fish. Uh, most of the fish that I catch wild almost always have some thyme in them. All right, I'll get a little bit of pepper. Just a very little bit of black pepper. Don't like to go too much with that. And the same thing, we just go inside. And flip them over. Get the other side good. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to take our garlic. I'm just going to kind of drizzle it along the top which is actually going to be our bottom. And a lot of this is going to fall when we flip it, but that's okay. As long as it just ends up underneath it. It's got a little piece of garlic skin. Okay. I'll try to do it with one hand so I still have one good hand. Okay, now we're going to get some garlic on the inside. And I like a lot of garlic and my wife especially likes a lot of garlic. So we kind of put a good bit of that on there. All right, now we put it over to what will end up being the top side while we're cooking. Okay. Now we take our butter. Oops, actually, I should have put the garlic on after I put the butter inside, at least the last bit of garlic on the top. I almost always make that mistake every single time and then I spill a little bit more garlic, but that's okay. <laughs> we take our butter and we just put it inside and we're gonna go fairly liberal with the butter again. It's okay to just have a lot of butter in there and it just kind of oozes out as you're cooking. Okay, so we got our butter inside there, nice. Now we're gonna put our butter on the top. And then, is, this is the point where we really should put the garlic on the top so it gets on top of the butter and it just kind of drizzles down and melts with it. Or drizzle down with it when it melts. Okay. Okay. This is ready for the oven. We have the oven preheated at four, uh, no, sorry. Uh, we have an oven preheated at 375 degrees. We're gonna put it in for about 20 minutes and check it and see how it looks then. It might need a few more minutes because this is a really big fish, but we'll see how it is at that point. So we'll see you then. Okay, we're gonna slide it in the oven now. timer for 20 minutes okay so we got it set for 20 minutes and we'll, we'll come back and check it then I, it's a lot bigger of a fish so we'll probably have to do another five maybe even ten minutes so we'll come back and see you then okay looks like that's about 20 minutes timer is about to go off Oops, I just turned the oven off. Dummy. 
Actually, I turned the timer off. I turned the oven off there. Okay, let's check it. <laughs> Jingles, calm down, baby. Skin's peeling away nice. Meat's getting soft, but still pretty soft, so we're gonna give that a. I'll say, uh, I'm gonna give it eight more minutes and we'll check it again. Okay. So let's set our timer without turning off the oven like a big silly. Alright, eight minutes. Alright, we'll come back and check it then and see how it is. It's looking really good. I'm looking forward to this. Check it again. Oh, it's sizzling good. It smells really, really good. Alright. Skin is peeling away nicely. Alright, we're really close. You could eat it now and it would be fine and safe. I'm gonna give it just a little longer. I might get just a little bit flakier. All right, so we're gonna set the timer again. So I'm just gonna do five more minutes. Okay, we'll check it again then and it's definitely gonna be done then. We're gonna put it on the table and it's gonna be really good. <laughs> All right, let's take it out. I think it's going to be good this time. Oh, that looks so good. Be really careful, don't get splashed by hot butter. Oh yeah, that looks good. Okay, we're gonna just let this sit here, let it cool just a little bit. We're gonna put it at the table and dig in. This is gonna be really good. Okay, we got our fish here at the table. Now I'm doing two things I don't normally do with trout. Um, normally, or at least often, when I bake them especially, I'll leave the head on. As you can see, this guy was too, he barely fits in the tray as it is, so if we had the head on, he wouldn't fit in our pan. And then again, normally we would serve them on a platter, not on the pan on the table, but our platter, even with the head off, isn't big enough for this fish. It's like half the size of that fish. Yeah, this is a pretty... <laughs> it's a big fish. Yeah, this is a pretty good trout. <laughs> so we got our butter garlic sauce here, we made a little bit of broccoli and some big potatoes to go with it. All right, let's dig in. So normally what I like to do is I peel the skin back. I really like to just leave it on when I cook it because it just helps it kind of like steam in its own skin almost and it comes out really good. And all our seasoning just kind of cooks into it. Oh, look at that delicious meat. Now just peel good. back the skin. The top fin right here with the bones just pulled out. It probably isn't coming out in the camera, but all the fins, all the bones pull out. I don't do my butterfly cut like I do when I fry fish because the bones just peel out a lot easier this way. All right, so now we got the skin peeled back and it just separates away. And we take our little spatula and just kind of lift it up onto the spatula. The spatula is going right along the rib bone basically. Thank you, Liv. You're welcome. Mm. Get a little bit more for you. Mm -hmm. This looks amazing. <laughs> Thank you. And we got these big flaky pieces. And this is just the one half. We also have all the meat on the other side. I know. Stuff. 
get some for myself. Oh, this looks perfect. I love these Fishman and Shokan Reservoir. It's so clean. The clarity of the water makes it a little hard to catch them sometimes. You really gotta be on your game. But the fish tastes so good out of there. It's so pure and clean and delicious. All right, sweetie, dig in and tell me what you think. All right. I'll get my potato ready while you try that. Yes. Look at that meat. It just looks amazing if you can see that on camera. Oh, that looks so good. Mm -hmm. How is it? It's delicious, my love. Thanks. It's amazing. Awesome. Mm. Oh, wow. I'm gonna forget to eat my potatoes and broccoli. <laughs> this is delicious. All right, I got some stuff on mine if you wanna get yours ready. Yes. It's a little salt and pepper on my potatoes and broccoli. You're probably gonna want that too. Mm -hmm. This is one of our favorite meals. Okay. Let me get some butter garlic sauce on my fish. Oh yeah, it's all flaky. This looks really good. So this sauce that we make here, I guess you shouldn't call it sauce. It's basically just, we take a bunch of butter, some garlic powder, and some cut up bits of garlic that we crush up. We put it all together with a little bit of the same Italian seasoning that we put on the fish and just melt it in the microwave. And it's really delicious. It's not the best thing in the world for you, but it's really delicious. <laughs> That's the pepper, my love. Oh, yes. Sorry, sweetie. Thank you. you. You're welcome. Okay, I'm gonna get my first bite of this little yummy trout. Mmm. <laughs> it's it's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. This is mm. delicious. Mmm. Mmm. All the bones just stayed attached to the spine. Mm-hmm. We'll pull the camera in closer later and show it for everyone to see. Oh, the meat just comes right off. Mm. It's absolutely delicious. Wow. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. mm. It pairs well with the broccoli and potato, too. It's like nothing that's going to overpower it. It just complements it yes. nicely. It also goes really, really good with potato and asparagus. Mm. Also, any type of like, these are regular potatoes, but red potato is really good with it too. Mm. This is delicious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna finish our dinner here. I hope you all enjoyed this video. We made we had a lot of fun making this video. Yes. And um, I keep forgetting to do this, but now that I remember, I'm gonna introduce my wife Scotia because I always forget because she's such a big part of me. It is like, I, it's hard to like think like oh I gotta introduce you. It's like introducing my right hand. I love you so much. I love much. you. So this is my wife Scotia. She Hi. she makes this whole channel possible. She does so much behind the scenes that mm -hmm. you can't really see. That's just I couldn't do any of this without her. I love you. I love you so much, sweetie. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> mm, I'm dig back in. This is delicious. Oh, my God, yes. Oh, that broccoli is so good. Oh, really good. Mm.